Good morning, Upfield Church, and happy Mother's Day to all of our moms on this very special day, and it is a very special day. Mother's Day is one of those days that's special for the church. Uh, there's some really big days, you know, for the church. You know, Christmas is, is one of them, Easter is another, and Mother's Day. And I can still remember very vividly in my mind uh, about Mother's Day growing up, and I know that my granny, she would always wear a corsage. And we go to church, and they would usually give out corsages, you know, to uh, the oldest mother and the youngest mother, the one who had the most kids, and and so forth. And those are the things that are just stuck in my head. And so we're experiencing Mother's Day maybe a little bit slightly different. And the thing about Mother's Day is, is that you know it's a time in which we interact with these special people, and maybe even some women that are maybe not your mother, but maybe they really add a benefit to your life and. What's so unique about this is is that we love these people. They mean something to us. And so here we are as a, as a church and, and as a people, and we're still in quarantine, but yet we want to really engage with, you know, with, with these ladies in our life, particularly our mothers. And it's like, man, it's, it's social. And then now that's kind of being challenged. And I know that things are starting to open up and... Uh, and in different parts of the country, we're seeing, you know, churches starting to, you know, open the doors. And in some of them, it's 50% capacity. And they still want you to go to church, but yet practice social distancing. And I haven't quite figured that out yet. So it's going to be a while before we see the church uh, really come into full swing because we've still not seen the full effects of this. And so you're like, we need to be connected, but yet disconnected. And I know that some of the challenges that we have, you know, right now with on Mother's Day, that we want to connect and relate to you know, our mom's on this very special social day, but then, you know, it comes with these little challenges because their, our relationship with them is social, and yet our relationship with church is, is social. And it's almost like, okay, so how do we do this, and, and what, do, what do we do? Well, the thing about it is, is that while we're doing this, if things are a little different, and what do we do? The best that we can. And so one thing I've loved about all these past two months is that all these different churches are doing things a little different to try to make it social to connect people together and using things such as Zoom and Facebook Live and YouTube Live and do it, even parking lot churches just to try to connect people together the best that we can. But in that last song that we did, I can't but think that some of this we've been able to use as an opportunity to do just that, rest. And some of you, some of us have really struggled with that because we're so used to going full throttle all the time. And now that all those other things are taken from us, it's almost like, what do you do? And now here it is on Mother's Day, and now that's impact as well. So just another area of your life that is impacted. But let me, let me have a picture of this for you, okay? Could you imagine right now uh, coming to church or going to visit your mother with, you know, plexiglass between you? Can you imagine coming to church and having, you know, plexiglass between you? And I say, that's what I'm saying. Like, the church is social, you know, and it's almost like a second nature to, you know, to hug certain people or to shake hands and to have this close intimacy with people. And that, well, because that's what the church is. It is social. And we have these relationships with, with these mothers, and it is social. It is intimate. That's the way that it is. And so during this time, that's kind of been difficult. And so can we imagine, you know, not being able to get close and have this interaction? It's different. But what it is, is that it's because this socialness, it adds a part of joy into our lives. Like, I think there's nothing greater than to be able to experience this level of intimacy with other people, particularly with the church, particularly with one another. And I know that we all long to have back the normalcy that we're used to and we're hearing it from every aspect of our life that the new normal you know the the new normal but i just want you to know that we're vigilantly seeking god and praying about when we can come back as normal as we possibly can and not sure exactly yet what that looks like so we desire your prayers but the whole point of it is is that we're missing this key word right here this fellowship this closeness involvement with others. And so what we're trying to do is the best that we can. So I encourage you right now, you have this post, the whatever media that you're using this on, use this as an opportunity to connect with somebody else, 
Tell hello to someone else. Not just generic, hello everybody. I'm sorry, somebody specific in your life. Because we've got people in our life that really mean something to us. And I know that I'm not telling you to take an opportunity to tell every single individual person to help, but just give a shout out to somebody. Somebody who means something to you. Because I guarantee you there's aspects of your life that is better because somebody is in it. Because whoever that somebody is, and it could be somebody's, but we all have a few key people into our lives. So right now, give them an encouragement. It can be on this post. It could be you know, something private. You can send them a text. You can give them a phone call. But use this as a platform, an opportunity to really try to connect with somebody else because I tell you, my kids have taught me something over these past few weeks. What they've been doing with their friends and their friends have been doing with them is that they've been taking the time to sit down and actually write out letters, you know, with a stamp. And actually mailing it out. And they're getting something. And you should see the expressions on my kid's face when they get a letter from one of their friends. And it is unreal what this does. It is so encouraging. And instantly, this joy of this friendship, this fellowship, it is rekindled. It is brightened all from a simple note. So I know that right now we're experiencing quarantine, but we can still have fellowship one to another. Don't allow other limitations to block you on this. So I ask you, if there's somebody that has, you know, really meant something to you, your life is better because somebody is in it, let them know. Give them a word of encouragement. Give them a phone call. (laughs) Write them a letter. Let them know. Send them a message. Let them know just what you mean to them. Let them know you're, you're prayed for them. Because I'm telling you, it'll change somebody's day. It could even possibly change somebody's life. Your life is better because somebody is in it. And this is what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at this particular lady whose others' lives were better because she was in it. Would you please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1. And we're going to kind of look back at a verse that we briefly looked at last week. And we're going to kind of break this down of this woman's life. And I'm telling you, today is very powerful. So I hope that you're really listening. You're really paying attention. You've got your Bible out. We're going to be in a couple different places. So we're going to start out in Acts. Then we're going to go to Luke. And then we're going to go to John. And I know I typically don't flip flop through the Bible. But this is very powerful. And I need you to get with me. Acts chapter 1 verse 12. Look at this. When they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away, when they arrived, they, were in the, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. This is the eleven. You can count them out. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. Eleven men here. These are eleven of Jesus' closest friends, known as the disciples. The ones that he traveled with, done many miracles with. He has special teachings just to them where he took them aside. They would spend time in praying and teaching. He even told them and sent them out so they could go and teach others and even perform miracles themselves. Very intimate group. These 11 are very vital at this time in history. Particularly the history of the church because it's just kicking off. Now look at this next verse. All these were continually united in prayer along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Again, this comes back to the fellowship. So they were continually united. And we talked about this last week, and I had the example of the candles here, and about how we bring to this fellowship, how we bring to this, and how when we come together, it kindles up the fire And the fire and the presence of the Holy Spirit, not only does it fill us up, but it ignites us and it unites us. And they were together in this fellowship and they had this joy and they were united in prayer. They were united. But there were many women there, but there's only one woman who's called out by name. Many other women were a part of this fellowship as well. We have the 11 disciples, other men and women, particularly there's a lot of women, but including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and His brothers. Now, I love this because Mary brings along the brothers of Jesus. And where is she at? She's right down in the midst of what? Church, this fellowship. 
And she's able to bring a level of joy to this that nobody else can bring. These, particularly these men, but this entire group, their lives are better because Mary, the mother of Jesus, is in it. And this is so powerful. She played such an important role to this fellowship to bring this joy and this comfort, particularly this fellowship. And I'm telling you, this is very powerful. So now we're going to look over at Luke chapter 1 because we get a glimpse into her life and what she says. This is just very powerful. But I want you to see this. Luke chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 26, okay? This is good stuff. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. To a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favored woman. The Lord is with you. She was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Now look at verse 30. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen. I love it when your mom tells you to listen. Now listen, you got your listening ears on. The angel's making sure that Mary is listening. Now listen. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. This is the visit, the visit of angel Gabriel to Mary to give the birth announcement that she was not expecting. For she was a virgin, engaged to Joseph. And this angel, Gabriel, comes down to give this birth announcement of Jesus. He was indeed special, and that's what the news that Gabriel is giving is just how special this son was going to be. And you can keep reading on because Mary does ask a few questions and it's okay to ask God questions. There's a difference between questioning God and asking God questions. And so she asked a question. How can this be seeing I know not a man? Then you get to my favorite verse in the whole Bible that for with God nothing shall be impossible. She gives, the angel gives this breakdown. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you will conceive and give birth to a son. That gives details about how this is going to take place. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now here's Mary. And this is, we first started out in the book of Acts. But this is roughly 34 years prior to that experience in the upper room in Acts. Her faith, her walk with God really got ignited 34 years prior to her being in that upper room with the disciples. With this announcement of this special boy that she was going to give birth to. This would be the Son of God. And so she had this. She experienced this. And she got some more confirmation because you can see later on in this chapter, she goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant with a miraculous birth in her old age to John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. And whenever Mary enters in the room and greets Elizabeth, the baby leaps, rejoices inside her womb. What joy they had of this fellowship. Do you see this joy, this connection? And Jesus is the key. We see later that she had this miraculous birth, born in Bethlehem. Not only is it fulfilling prophecy, but that night when he was born, who visited these shepherds, they had a miraculous visitation by these angels that filled up the sky to give this news. For unto you, born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And they said, let's go see this thing which come to pass. It's been made known to us. And so they go, and what do they find? Mary and Jesus, just the way the angels had said. And it says that Mary kept all these things in her heart. She knew not only was her boy special, but she knew who he was. Every mama thinks that their kids are special. Their baby boy or their baby girl. Nothing's like them. I know, I feel the same way about my kids. 
You, you should feel the same way about your kids, but there's a difference with Mary. Hers was the Son of God. We see eight days later, her and Joseph, they go to the temple, actually required to have like a baby dedication. And there they are approached by this priest and also this lady worker of the temple. And on separate occasions, they both recognize and identify Jesus as being the Messiah, the Son of God. Man, that's powerful. That is powerful. We see a few years later, Mary gets another confirmation. When they get this surprise visit with three kings, they come and present lavish gifts, extravagant gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I want you to understand what this is doing to Mary's faith. Not only does she recognize and know who Jesus is, it's not only just her son, but that's the son of God. He's special. And all this is confirmation and confirmation. And then you see that Jesus is around, you know, 8 to 12 years old. They lose him. They lose Jesus. They lost the Son of God. But where they find him at? He was at church. He was at church listening and asking questions to these religious leaders. And they were impressed with his knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. What did Mary do? She filed this away. Oh, it's just more confirmation, just who her baby boy was. And what happened with Jesus? He grew. He grew. And so this lifestyle went on for 30 years. Jesus was right at 30 years old when he began his ministry publicly. Whenever he approached John the Baptist, he had, John the Baptist was baptizing people left and right, telling them to repent and be baptized, preparing them for Jesus' coming. And then Jesus walks toward John the Baptist there at the Jordan River. And John the Baptist recognizes. And he calls out, Behold, the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. It's Jesus. And Jesus comes to him and says, John, I want to be baptized. Oh, he gets baptized. The heavens open up. And the Spirit of God rests upon Jesus like a dove. And this voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Oh, man, all this thing, all these things, Mary, Mary, this is about her son, and Mary is known about. And then Jesus goes up to the wilderness. There he fasts and prays for 40 days. He's also tempted by the devil. And when he comes back, he really ignites his ministry, chooses some disciples, and they get an invitation. Please turn with me to John, the book of John, chapter 2. They get an invitation to attend a wedding. And so all this, 30 years, has led up to this. And in John chapter 2, they get this invitation to go to a wedding. Now look at this. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding as well. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother told him, they don't have any wine. What has this concern of yours to do with me, woman? <laughs> Jesus asked, my hour has not yet come. Do whatever he tells you, his mother told the servants. Now, I love this. First of all, here's a warning, I think, to all children. I don't know that I would go around and ask your mother or question something about your mother and then call her woman. That may be questionable but he does calls her out woman but then what she does is ignore that statement she turns to the servants and she says whatever he tells you to do do it now why would mary have that much faith and confidence in jesus that he could take care of this situation because her faith is older than their brand new faith she's able to bring this a whole nother level of faith and security into this group, she recognized and identified him as the Son of God. Whatever, do whatever he tells you. And we know what happens. The servants, they listen. Jesus told him to go get some water pots. They bring back six water, six water pots, filled them up with water, he said, I draw it and take it to the leader. They do, and it turned into wine, all of it. And they said, oh, this is the best wine ever. 
the miracle known as Jesus turning water into wine. And it started because Mary recognized Jesus as the Son of God. She saw something. Not just that her boy was special, but that he was God in the flesh. And John records this. She was a part of this fellowship. She brought joy. She brought confirmation to this group. How many times have you questioned during this Maybe during this quarantine, or maybe even during your life, that you've questioned maybe God, His reason why, why things happen, why things are going in the way that they are, why things of certain things have happened to you. And no doubt the disciples experienced some of this uncertainty, particularly at the death of Jesus, because they were looking for Jesus to set up His kingdom right then. But Jesus was teaching about later. So. We have Mary here who has a little bit more experience in her faith walking with Jesus. And now she's able to add a level of confirmation and build up their confidence and their faith in their walk with Jesus. We see that she was a very intricate part of this circle, a very intricate part of this fellowship, and she's able to bring this now, if you look at John chapter 19, this is now has been going on for three and a half years. The life and ministry of Jesus is coming to a close. He's now 33 and a half years old. And he's on the cross. And while on the cross, this takes place. John chapter 19, verse 25. Standing by the cross of Jesus where his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, so Three Marys there. When Jesus, verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there, this is John, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Jesus entrusted the care of his mother to his friend, John the Baptist. I want you to see this close relationship, this intimacy, the intimacy of this fellowship that they had. It was something unlike any other in which Jesus trusted his disciples, particularly John, with the care of his mother. And that's very powerful. Church, they had a close fellowship with one another. And we... We're meant to have a close fellowship one to another. Not with everybody. We can't be close to everybody, but you can be close to a few. And this is what I miss about church. This is what I've really come to understand over the past two months is that I miss so many people. I miss this group of fellowship. And they had an even tighter fellowship and i've got some tight close fellowship with some people and i pray that this time over the, these past two months that that has been really developed in your life that that has really flourished this close relationship this close fellowship that you have and particularly it should be maybe with some family people that you really use this as an opportunity to really bond close together with because we need this we need the fellow we were meant for fellowship, we were designed and meant for relationships. And here's Mary, able to be this bonding unit, able to bring this group a level of confidence and confirmation. And if you look back at Acts chapter 1, all those disciples were together. And there was Mary, in verse 14, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. What Mary is able to contribute to this group was something that nobody else could bring. She had 30 years of experience and confirmation that who Jesus was. She even heard it and got her first confirmation before he was even born. Before conception, she had confirmation that her son would be the son of God. What a level of confidence she had in her son. She's able to bring this now to this group. She could bring her life's experience 
her walk with Jesus, she could bring that to this group. Now, here's my question to you on this Mother's Day. The group of people in your life, the fellowship in your life, and I'm talking, yes, the church, because that's a part of the fellowship, but even the smaller group of fellowship that you have in your life, what can you bring or what do you bring? See, this is very, very careful. We need to tread on this because a lot of relationships, it's about what we get, not what we give. But church, we need to be giving in our relationships. We need to be contributing to our relationships. And not one time do we ever see Mary feeling sorry for herself or trying to get special treatment from these disciples or this group. She doesn't. What does she see? She's herself, she sees herself right in the same playing field as them. And she's contributing. What is she doing? Huh, we skimmed over it and we didn't even see it, did we? Look at what she's doing. Verse 14. What were they doing? All these were continually doing what? United in prayer. Can you imagine having Mary, 30 plus years of experience, walking with Jesus, praying for you? Could you imagine that? They experienced it. Now, I'm not saying that Mary is here praying for us. But what I'm saying is we can play a very intricate role in this close fellowship in our lives, praying for others. Could you imagine? Can you imagine having someone that's been faithful, walking with Jesus for 30 plus years, praying for you? Church, I want to tell you, there ain't nothing like it. And I, there is no words that can replace when you hear those words, I just prayed for you. Or somebody sending you something that says, I'm praying for you this morning. Man, I'm telling you, it's not only encouraging and uplifting, but this is exactly what the disciples practiced here. At the beginning of the church in the book of Acts, this type of prayer life, this type of walk, this type of fellowship. And it adds joy. And I got to experience this, and I usually experience this every Sunday morning. I usually get a text message from my mom. And here's what I received this morning. Good morning, sunshine. Today is going to be amazing getting to hear from God. Praying for you. Love, Mama. That's not made up. I'm like, wow. This goes right along with what we're talking about today. That we can contribute to the life and walk and ministry of others by building up their confidence and their faith and their walk when we unite together in prayer. Now, you heard that song that we just played, Rest. I know that sometimes we don't like to rest. We don't want to sit down. But church, we cannot have an effective prayer life and if we take the time to sit down and rest. It cannot happen any other way. We need that time that we can sit down and sit aside by ourselves and just to sit with God. Can you ha imagine having, I'm not going to tell you how old my mama is, but she's got a lot of life experience. She's survived breast cancer twice. That's three fingers, twice. Uh, amazing things that she's done. And she's able to bring her life's experiences and her prayer life to pray for me. Can you imagine what we can do in the impact in the lives of others? Bring your life's experiences, your walk with God to pray for someone else. Church, it's life-changing. You talking about joy of fellowship is when people are able to contribute to your walk with God instead of trying to take away from you. Do you see the difference? Mary is contributing, not robbing. Church, I've got several key people in my life and I get a message from them. I got some this morning. One said, hey old buddy, looking forward to today's message. Not like, man. And I was like, thank you for your encouragement. Contributing not robbing. Do you, do you see the difference? Because there's people in our life that will suck the living daylights out of you, but there's others, a few key people, that really build you up, that will bring joy to your life 
and will help you in a time of need. My question to you is, who will you invest in? Who will you contribute to? And I'm, I know we can't do it to everybody, but church, there are a few people in your life that really means something to you and your life is better because they're in it. What can you do to contribute? You talk about joy of fellowship. And I told you earlier that uh, some of our kids, they're, they're writing letters back to the Ramey kids and to another friend, uh, Aiden, and there's more of them. Uh, I've seen Abby. The, all these people, these kids are contributing. I'm seeing youth under the leadership of our youth pastor, David Smith, Take the time to write letters and make masks and do this stuff for not asking for anything but trying to contribute. Church, that is something that we need to experience that's hardly ever taught. Contribute to the lives of others instead of taking away. This is something that this quarantine has taught me is the value of contributing and it doesn't have to happen the way that our mind sometimes thinks it does. A simple phone call a letter, even a text message to take just a moment to say, praying for you. That's actually praying for you. That's three. That's three words. In an instant, if you're sending out those three words in a moment, joy is experienced in that fellowship. Church, how can you contribute to the life of somebody else? Mary did an amazing role in what she was able to contribute, and we don't see her mentioned after this, but what she did in those early days of the church, and this was prior to the power of the Holy Spirit coming down, she was able to pray for these young friends of Jesus. To remind you now, she's older. She's got 30 years experience walking with Jesus. And to be, be able to pray for these close friends of Jesus, these disciples, could you imagine what that prayer life was like? Unlike anything <laughs> I think that I've ever experienced. That type of life experience. That type of prayer. Church, I'm asking you to the group of people in your life, what do you bring? What do you contribute? And you may think, I don't have anything to contribute. I promise you, you do. Because if you have a phone or can write a letter, then you can contribute to building up somebody's faith and when you do this it adds a level of joy to your fellowship and just unites you happy mother's day and we're using this as an opportunity to build up our mothers these women in our lives by doing the exact same thing what do we do <laughs> we write in cards we give them flowers we're building them up and letting them know how much they mean to us church can you imagine what would happen if the church, all of us, would build others, contribute to their faith instead of trying to take something from them. Instead of what you can get away from them, what you can get out of them, contribute. What you can contribute. Church, it's life changing. To know that you've got people in your corner that support you, not seeing what they can get from you. And Mary, she probably had the perfect opportunity to really try to take advantage of this situation. She's the mother of Jesus. She could have set herself up on a pedestal, but she didn't. Instead, she got down on her knees with these close friends of Jesus, and she prayed. She was united with them in prayer. My question is, who are you united in prayer with? Who are you building up? Who are you investing in? Church, it's time that we invest in others, that we contribute to their faith their walk with God. Would you do that with me? Would you use this today, particularly on Mother's Day? Would you use this week as an opportunity to build up somebody else? It could be a boss. It could be a fellow co-worker. It could be a neighbor. It could be a friend. It could be somebody from church. It could be somebody that you barely know. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe you say, God, who is it today that you want me to build up? Who is it today that I can pray for that needs it? And I promise you, God will put somebody on your heart that you can pray for, that you can write a letter of encouragement to, that you may be able to make some cookies for, or you may be able to make some masks for. God, 
maybe who is who is a youth, who is a teenager right now that might be struggling that could use some encouragement from a seasoned person, someone who's had some experience walking with Jesus? Who can I invest in? Church, I'm telling you, if we do this, it is life-changing for you and for that person. We remit for fellowship. Would you join me in that fellowship? That we would impact the lives of others around us. And just show them how much we care and how much God cares about them. I know that this is Mother's Day. And what a great example that we've been given from Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was united in prayer. She contributed to the group. May we follow her example and her walk with the Son, our Savior, Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, what a great big God you are. And we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, that it is so rich and it contributes to so much of our walk with you. God, you're not done with us yet. And I know things are somewhat of a mess I know things have changed. But you've not. You're still God. And we're still here. And we are still supposed to be the light of the world. God, help us to follow the example of Mary that we would contribute to the fellowship in our lives, that we contribute to the lives of others. Oh, Father God, how much we love you. Now help us show it. Help us to go out from this place today and show love and contribute to the lives of others. As you continue to pray wherever you're at, you've got someone on your heart that you want to pray for, somebody in your heart that you want to unite in prayer for, somebody on your heart that you want to contribute for. Let's pray for those people right now. You know who they are? Right now. Let's uplift those names to the Lord right now. Would you join me in doing this? Let's pray for those specific people that you want to contribute to the life for, that you feel already that God is laying on your heart, that you would build them up in their walk, in their faith, in their life. Let's pray for those people right now. You got your name? Let's pray for them right now. Father, we uplift, and these blanks are being filled, we uplift these people to you, Father. Oh, God, that you would just fill them up with your glory and your love. God, that they may experience you through the power of your Holy Spirit and that we might be like Mary and contribute to their walk with you. Father, we uplift these people to you and we pray, God, that you do a great work through them. Help us, God, as we get down on our knees throughout this week to pray for them, that we'd bring our life's experiences to these prayers and that we would pray for these people with all that we've got. May you bless them. As you continue to pray, there may be somebody that's out there that maybe you don't have a name on your heart right yet. We're going to pray for those that's unknown right now. God, we pray that you would help us throughout this week. We might not know exactly who it is that we need to be contributing to, who it is that we need to be investing in, but you do. We ask God for clarity and discernment of who we can benefit, who, who we can pour in, who we can invest in, just as Mary we might be able to unite in prayer for them. That we might be able to contribute and encourage them in their walk with you, their marriage, their future, their education. Father, we uplift all of our seniors to you, our graduates that's graduating high school, and also our graduates that are graduating college. I know things are a little different, but God, what a perfect time to unite in prayer for them that we may be able to use this as an opportunity to encourage them in their dreams, and particularly in their pursuit of you and your future for them. Oh, God, help us that we wouldn't be life suckers, but that we'd be contributors, that we'd contribute to the life and faith and success of others. May we, Father, may we be the ones to really showcase what it's like to walk with the Son. God, we pray 
for our nation and its leaders. God, that you would bless them and help them to be wise as they try to open our country back up. May safety of the people in this nation be of a priority. And I pray that during this time, Father, that we would do like those songs we sang earlier and that this would be a time in which you can revive this earth, a revival to break through, and that we all would seek Jesus. Father, I thank you for all the mothers out there. May you just bless them. For those, Father, that may have lost their mothers, may you give them peace. And Father, we thank you for the ladies in our life that sometimes take that role and really invest in us. May you bless them. And today, Father, it's not all about mothers, but that we would use the example of Mary, that we would leave this worship experience today, and that we would go out, and that we would invest and contribute to the lives of others, that, Father, it is our goal that others' lives would be blessed because we are in it. Help us, Father, to show that kind of love and example throughout this week. May it be in our conversation. May it be in our attitude. That others' lives would be better because we are a part of it. May you bless, Father, these families and these marriages. Continue to bless those fathers on the front lines and help us, Father, to all that we say and all that we do bring glory and honor to you. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. From your home, would you give God some praise? Because God is so awesome. He's